Welcome back to DXB. Today we're having ourselves a little bit of a foodie special. Not sure if we can call Dubai the culinary capital of the world just yet, but you know what? We're tracking towards that at the moment and we're giving it a good nudge, that's for sure. How do we know that? A, look at the uh, restaurant industry here, look at the food industry here. B, Look at the talent coming to Dubai to set up as well, including the man alongside me. He's the brains behind Cash Can. He is a celebrity chef. He's an actor. He's much in demand here, but he's given us his time. Ranveer Brock, great to see you as always. Thank you. It's such a pleasure being here. And uh, yeah, thank you, for, thank you for having me over. Listen, um, you have achieved so much in your career to date. And you are renowned across the region. You could have pretty much put a pin into any part of the world and said, oh, I'll open a restaurant there. So the question is, why Dubai for the expansion of the portfolio? I think you answered that question when you started the show, right? It's pretty much getting to be the culinary capital of the world. Um, also, I mean, we have restaurants in, uh, we have uh, nine restaurants in the US. And um, for me, Dubai, one, um, it's, two, it's a two and a half hour flight. Mm. You know, for me, flying from Mumbai to Delhi is, is as much uh, as flying from, from Mumbai to Dubai. I can manage uh, a restaurant here that easily as much as I can manage in Delhi. Um, also, I feel um, it's the right place to be because mm. uh, any artist, you know, um, you're, 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 you're useless without people who understand and appreciate the art. Mm. So uh, you look for places where people appreciate where you're coming from appreciate the expression. I think Dubai is that place. And the competition, is the competition good as well for you and for the industry as a whole? No, I always say, the, you know, I always say the bigger the pie, the better it is, <laughs> you know. Uh, yeah. I like a big pie, you know, I'm a big fan <laughs> of a big pie, that's for sure. <laughs> so uh, I, I've always, I've always, I don't believe in saturated markets and this yeah. whole, you know, um, we, and, and funnily, even in the US when we expand, we expand to places where the pie is already big. You know, we say we've come to make the pie bigger. And that's, that I think is the beauty of the food business. And as long as people have breakfast, lunch and dinner, chefs like us have a job. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Chef, I'm a huge fan of yours. I, I discovered you, I think, around about the time of the lockdown when I was trying to work on my culinary skills. I've actually prepared some of your dishes at home, tagged you in it. You like them, I screenshotted it and reposted it, but who's keeping track of that? I've been lucky enough to uh, try um, the, some of the dishes at your restaurant. How has it been since the opening of Kashkan? No, it's been fantastic. I think, um, you know, the, the sign that you're doing something right is when you don't feel the need to change. And in the first two to three months of the restaurant, if you don't feel the need to change anything, it means, uh, you know, you're, you're doing something right. And we get that sense in the first three months of the restaurant. Uh, the idea behind the restaurant or, you know, I'm, I've been cooking for 30 odd years now. And uh, what I've realized is as we, as we take this curve of life as chefs and as artists, we, we, we get to places where it becomes extremely simple, mm -hmm. right? So the idea of the restaurant is to keep the food simple, uh, keep it honest, take you to a place where, you know, you get it. Mm -hmm. It's like that, those popcorn moments. You just gotta, you know, you get it. You don't need to be explained and you don't need to have uh, long and complicated uh, dishes. I thought, I thought Dubai was ready for that, even in the middle of a lot of, you know, uh, restaurants. It was a risk that we took. We said we're just going to yeah. do simple Indian food that reminds people of India if they've traveled there or that gives them a sneak peek into the simplicity of the country. Uh, and that, that, that working for me is a sign of a very mature market. Is that, a, is that a philosophy that rings true with you as well? Regarding that, I think for me, I'm still at the beginning of my career. So I think that he has seen things, he has experienced things. He has reached maybe even a level of ease, a facility of, of doing business, of, of, of making menus, of, of just hiring, talking, training, which for me is still like, I need to put a lot of energy to, to comp fully comprehend. Um, so I feel like it's not a philosophy that I fully understand yet because I've only been cooking for five to six years. <laughs> Perhaps maybe in, in, in um, in 30 years, as you were saying, maybe I'll, I'll be able to understand that, that more, but, but it's, it's just, there's a lot of work that, that even if you're successful young, that you can't compensate experience and experience that he has. Yeah, yeah. So I think uh, in 30 years, you can ask me that question. <laughs> <laughs> it's so fascinating, actually, it, it, listening to very, very different perspectives from the same industry. Now, I wanted to ask in terms of, I mean, we introduced you as celebrity chef. 
We were speaking earlier about what it means to have a Michelin star. Is that a curse or a blessing? To be known as a celebrity chef, do you like that? Do you hate it? <laughs> mm. I think uh, this is a very good question, Katie. You know? uh, so when, when I, when I um, started cooking, and we did restaurants in the US, and uh, initially they weren't really doing well. So people said, you know what, just, just uh, grow a fat belly and just, you know, just grow like big moustache or something. You need to look the Indian chef part, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nobody was, I'm talking about 2001, right? Mm. Nobody would trust in a skinny Indian chef in the US, <laughs> <laughs> you know. Um, and I, I've seen that place where you sort of, you know, there is a chef and then there's a celebrity chef. Today, I think all chefs are celebrities. Mm. Okay. You know, um, we are at a time where if you don't see a chef walk up and talk to a guest on table, you think something's wrong. Um, it's almost the, become like a rock star industry. Almost, absolutely, you know? absolutely. So I think, I think times have changed. You've learned to accept the fact that you're in the business, you're in the show business. Mm. It is as much, you're as much a marketeer of the restaurant than, than anything else. And that's what here, we are here to do, right? Mm. We're here to talk about a restaurant. So it comes to you as a second nature. And after a point in time, you become uh, comfortable. And I, I hate to say, but slightly indifferent to the celebrity bit of it. Mm. And you carry on with your life. But do you kind of revel in it as well? Like you realize how much it brings to the business, I suppose. Yeah, you learn to utilize it. Mm. Nice. <laughs> Recognize it. Can I ask, has it, did it, did it used to bother you at the beginning? Or did yes, it, make it, did. It? it did, it did. Because I'm at the beginning, right? And like all of a sudden I went from being a guy who grew up in Dera to being a chef that everyone in, in Dubai knows. And then like, which of course I'm very grateful for because it's, it's a very good opportunity. But also it's always been like, for me, like a struggle. Like there is Suleiman Haddad and there's the guy in my house and they're not the same people. Yeah. And like, you know, like on my day off, I make it a point, I go out in slippers, I go out like as comfortable as I want because I never want to feel like I have to look a certain way because now people know me, I have to behave. I just want to be myself, you know what I mean? I hear you. And, and, and again, going back to the five years versus 30 years, being on the other side, being on, on the beginning side, how, how has that been at the beginning for you? No, actually, I think initially you're, you're like, you know, initially, India is a very celebrity first sort of a country. Yeah. Let's accept that, you know. Yeah. Uh, your skills don't matter <laughs> if you have the presence, right? Initially, it is a struggle saying, hey, I can cook as well. How, I mean, you know, you, have you been to my restaurant yet? No, just, can we just get a picture with you? <laughs> initially, it, it, it troubles you, right? That was me when I went to his restaurant. <laughs> <picture. I'm> like, <laughs> picture, picture. Uh, <laughs> But I think over a period of time, you learn to make peace with it. You learn to be more grateful. Maybe we need to use it. You learn to appreciate it and you learn to uh, use it. You learn to keep yourself, you learn to make both Suleiman Haddad's meat. Yeah. Know? And then you're, ah, you're okay. at peace. So I think it's, a, it's it, I'm 100% sure you'll get there in no time. Ram, we could talk for hours. Unfortunately, <laughs> we've only got one hour as well. And we've got loads of guests to get into as well in our culinary landscape. Last one from me. What's next for Chef Ranveer, for actor Ranveer? What, what's 2024 got in store? So this acting thing is something that I just, it sort of bumped my way and I said, okay, sure, why not? And there's this, you know, um, whether you like it or not, there's always this obsession with Bollywood. <laughs> so I just did a Bollywood film that's going to launch uh, in the February of 2024 in terms of the acting bit. Uh, there's, an, there's another Kashkan opening up next year in Dubai. We're opening three more restaurants in the US and uh, we're launching a series on Netflix, keeping my fingers crossed before the end of next year. So all in all, it's a really quiet year. Yeah, yeah? I was going to say, it's how much <laughs> <is it? laughs> My goodness. So not much going on yeah, then. Exactly. <laughs> Chef, honestly, thank you so much for coming in. I mean, you're clearly super busy. We're glad you found the time. Good luck for 2024. We thank hope you, to have Katie. you back on the show next year. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, so much indeed. Thank you, Cheers. Okay, moving on. More culinary delights. Ahmed went down to Soon Izakaya, serving high-end Japanese cuisine infused with neoteric pop culture. <laughs> to have a one-of-a-kind is a Kaya experience. It has to be one-of-a-kind. Let's check it out. I'm here at Sun Izakaya, where we're going to be talking about the Japanese cuisine and the concept of Izakaya. Can you tell us more about uh, Sun, the concept behind it? Yeah, so Sun is a concept based on Japanese izakayas. Mm -hmm. So when you think of izakayas, it's a place people go to after work to wind down, relax, have a drink and some bites. I'm mm -hmm. um, here, we're taking that concept to 
the demographic of JLT. Okay. We saw it, it was uh, something that was missing. Mm -hmm. And what we found is that uh, it has um, been a really good feedback from the community. And when people come here, they kind of enjoy our cocktails, our food, and they enjoy the vibes. We have DJs coming in late at night and they just uh, party the night away and they kind of forget about their stress. What makes Soon uh, stands out is not only the uh, the concepts, but the the way the menu is built. Mm -hmm. You see a lot of classic dishes in izakayas that people are familiar with, but here we kind of interpret it in a little bit different way, whether it's the presentation or the flavor combinations. So when people order it, they, they already have a perception that they're going to get something familiar in izakaya. Yeah. You know, when they receive it, it's a little bit, oh, this is a quite different, interesting. I didn't think of this flavor combination or presentation or they took the extra effort to uh, make it in-house. Okay. Yeah. And I know that we're going to be preparing a dish uh, in a moment. Can you please tell us what it is? Yeah. So one of the dishes I'm proud of is our, it's quite a simple dish, but it's a house-made tofu and tomato salad. Mm -hmm. We kind of make a fermented black bean uh, waffle dressing, which is the soy and rice wine based dressing. Mm -hmm. And we can uh, pair that with some fresh sisal leaves and some pickled shallots. Yeah, so here I'm just gonna cut up some tomatoes here. So I'm just gonna put some of the tomatoes inside the, our mixing bowl here. And I'm just gonna drain our house made tofu here. And you bring the, to the soy milk up to 75 degrees. Yeah. And then it just starts curdling like cheese. Oh, yeah. Uh, so we break it up okay. into some small bites like this. And we add our dressing. Yeah. So we have a basically a wafu dressing, which is a rice and soy based dressing. And then we're just gonna take our bowl here and we're yeah. gonna build it up. So yeah. we have some lovely green shiso leaves. So we have tofu skin that we make crispy. Mm -hmm. And last but not least, we have these lovely micro purple shiso. It smells amazing, honestly. And you've got all these fresh ingredients put into it. It's quite colorful. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it looks really pretty. And I can't wait to try it. And now the fun part. Let's try the food. That was delicious. If you're into life cooking and high-end mouth-watering Japanese cuisine, make sure you come to this hidden gem. Soon Izakaya in JLT. Thank you, Ahmed, for that. Right, it's time for the Roundup. Katie, what is the buzz around town? The buzz is that Time Out Market Dubai has debuted three new concepts. Three new spin-off concepts by some of Dubai's top restaurateurs have made their debut at Time Out Market Dubai in Souk Al Baha. We're talking Onda by Alici, Little Jun's and Odeon. It's absolutely incredible. They've got new dishes and especially curated menus, which is very typical at Time Out Dubai. A dining experience with a culinary tour, also allowing guests to sample dishes alongside demonstrations from the chefs themselves. I was lucky enough to check it out already. I'm at Time Out Market every five minutes if I can get down there. So I love these three editions. You know, considering I'm such a big foodie, I'm embarrassed to say that I've never been down there. That's probably one area of, I guess, a foodie paradise that I'm yet to kind of be all over. <laughs> brilliant concept, uh, brilliant addition to the culinary scene here. Works, uh, worked brilliantly in Lisbon, worked brilliantly over in Miami. Love mm. the fact they bring it here. Food aside, the concept for me is great. I think Solomon will agree with this in the sense that it, th there's competition in there. Yeah. Um, because the, the, the format is locally grown brands mm -hmm. and again that's a little bit you know you know work out which ones are locally grown etc but somebody that's made their name here gets the opportunity to do it but if at the end of the 12 months you're not performing exactly somebody else comes in you're out and i quite like that it shows what, what, the evolution if you what like. i think is really good about it is that <clears throat> a lot of times you can't access a chef's food you know what I mean? You really can't, it's very hard. The restaurants, especially in peak season, the restaurants are busy. Mm. Um, and, 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 and maybe you just wanna eat the food, even if you can't access the food, maybe you just wanna eat it in a more relaxed, more quick, more, more casual way, but get their personality, get their food, get their vision. Mm. And I think that what the Time Out Market does is it gives that access to everyone in Dubai. Mm. You know, anyone can just attack and go in whichever direction yeah. you want, you know? <laughs> And, and you know, I, I, do, I, I am going to disagree with you on one thing that you yeah. said competition because in the industry, we're all friends. There's no enemies, you know, like, 
like there's there's there is no there's no competition it's like um chef was saying about how the, the, the he just wants the pie to grow i always say the same thing the tide rises all boats mm. so if i'm better it means the industry is better if the industry is yes. better it means yeah. that th that person's going to be better and then if that person's better again the industry gets better and it's just a cycle the tide rises all boats so i think it's really cool to have not competitors, but friends in that big hall, and then you get to enjoy who you want to eat from today. Mm. Yeah, no, but I th and, and that does exist. You see that camaraderie in yeah. there as well. And, and I, th I wasn't looking at it from a sort of competition of like fighting each other yeah, or like that, yeah, yeah. but more to do with it adds variety every year yeah. because the fact that you, you, you sort of can have new brands added, etc. Other brands sort of drop out. You've constantly got that variety, so yeah. it never gets stale. It, Never keeps, it keeps the timeout market busy because if a not busy business <laughs> is not is not there anymore, then it's going to get busier if you fill it with a busier one. And then also, again, it gives a chance for, for, for people to just join in and try, yeah, yeah, yeah. And try thing, a new uh, the, I was going to say, one of the things I love about timeout market as well is that you do get an essence of each outlet within timeout. Obviously, it's, they're not in their own venue, but the staff are so, fan like Jun's, obviously, he's yeah. brand new there. But their staff are so fun and you still get that element and so I, I love it. I think and if you've got addition. three fussy kids who refuse to eat yeah. the same dish, <laughs> it's the perfect place to take them, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. Would you ever consider opening maybe a pop-up or something over there? Um, for me, the thing at the moment is like I'm so focused on Moonrise mm. and we're actually moving to a big location in a year and a half. Ooh. So yeah, we have a, a big project. We're going we're gonna to move to a, a location that's eight times bigger than our current location. Ooh. But we're only going to double our, uh, our, our capacity. So we're still going to keep it very small volume. Yeah. We're going from 24 to 50 people um, per, per, per day. So now I'm like, everyone always asks me like, move out, do this, do that. Or will you join the timeout market or a similar market or and for me it's just so important that i really create this like let's say let's not call it a brand this sculpture mm -mm. this perfect sculpture chiseled shiny polished and then when it's time to take a step back then that's the time when 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 i will do other things but for now i know moon people love moonrise i love mm -hmm. moonrise but i know i can be better and as long as i think that moonrise can be better I always want to focus on Moonrise itself. You are so a true give perfectionist. Me some time. <laughs> For sure, take all the time you need. After the break, we meet the man behind the French fine dining supper club, Dino Modern. Plus, we've got a talented duo closing the night, so stay tuned.